Hello everyone, this is David Collins back from Ann Arbor Guitars doing a little demonstration of how we install the K&K &K Pure Mini pickup here in our shop. These have certainly become one of the most popular pickups we install, if not the most popular, and with good reason. They're fantastic sounding, good, very natural sound, reasonably good feedback resistant. We are not gonna show you the official K&K &K method. Um, if you've ever used these, you're probably familiar with these little uh, golf tee and plastic uh, pieces that they use to install. Um, it works perfectly fine if you're doing a once in a while uh, self install. For a shop like ours though, we want to try and use methods that are both a little bit more efficient and a little bit more consistent, less room for error. For about uh, the last 15, 20 years, I have used this little tool, it's simply some piece of Teflon or Delrin, I don't recall the exact material, but a glue resistant uh, plastic that I milled in a small recess to fit the K&K, &K, to fit the contours in the wire, a little hold down clamp, and then set these two pins in there that are set in tapered holes and tapered pins so that they can uh, press inward or expand outward to accommodate different bridge pin widths, anything from uh, just under two and an eighth to two and five sixteenths. And it simply sets it a fixed uh, distance in front of the pins and uh, directly centered between the two pins. I'm gonna go ahead and use this for the first sensor in the out of the three that we're installing just to show you how it works. And then I'll go in and show you our newer method. First step, anytime you're installing these is make sure your bridge plate is clean. Sometimes that can involve having to go in and sand any high spots, chips, things like that around the pins. Um, this one, I've already done that. Now I'm going to come in and wet a paper towel with some super glue accelerator, and then come in and just saturate the bridge plate with accelerator. I'm doing this for two reasons. One, obviously, so that the glue sets quicker when I go to install the pickup. Um, but also, I like to do this just as an added measure to prevent the super glue from penetrating too deep below the surface of the wood. For our old nylon tool, our old uh, pin tool, um, what we do is take one of these sensors and drop it into the recess and making sure there's no accelerator left on my fingers from the operation I just did. Uh, then we turn this hold down stop and pull it down and it will hold the sensor right in place exactly between the pins. Now for the first sensor, let me bring this up to the camera show you what we do. We're gonna take some medium viscosity super glue and put just a little dollop in the center and spread it out. We don't want squeeze out to come out around this, but we wanna make sure it's saturated all the way through. So don't put too much glue on there. You really do have to use the super glue though. The, um, the removable adhesive sounds like crap. It's like putting a shock absorber in between. So now we go slide our jig inside find the pinholes, and then simply press and hold this up to the top firmly for about three to five seconds. We have accelerator on the wood, so it will bond quite quickly. Then I come in and rotate the little handle there to remove it from the wire. And this one is right up against the pin, so a little tight. And there we have a nice, neat, centered uh, placement right between the two lower strings. What we've changed to recently, uh, in part to help accommodate pinless bridges that we don't have pins to use, is a small vacuum system. Um, we have a vacuum pump that we use for a lot of things here in our shop. So we bought a variety of different uh, small vacuum cups. These range eight to nine millimeters. And these actually come with a five millimeter thread, which ironically, uh, in a case like this, is perfectly compatible with a 3 16 or a 1032 thread that these old Waverly clamps use. So we're able to just lock this into an existing clamp, put a fitting at the bottom, hook this up to a vacuum pump, and use these to reach inside the guitar. We use these both for things like this, pickup installation, as well as cleat installation where we're reaching inside. Now the beauty of this is when the pickup is fastened in, even if we can't see inside the guitar, this hole on top is perfectly aligned. So we can simply look through the hole and get a perfect outside view of where the pickup will land on the inside. Now with the vacuum pump plugged in, we can take our second sensor, place it right on the suction cup, align the wire where we want it to go, then add our small drop of super glue, spread it around, making sure we have full coverage, uh, but not enough that it's really gonna squeeze out. And then we simply line it up on the outside or can use a mirror on the inside and
come up and press it perfectly into place just with a visual alignment. Hold it there for about three to five seconds to let the glue set. And then the vacuum suction cup will easily release. Now this last sensor on the high E, um, sometimes in some instruments it can benefit from being set a little bit further up to the treble side uh, to avoid the mid-range, emphasize the highs. Quite honestly, 90% of guitars, I don't think you're going to hear a difference, but I do like to lean just a little bit further up toward the treble side in the placement of the last sensor. Um, and this tool makes it very simple. Again, our small drop of glue, medium viscosity. Spread it around. And then we're going to move this up almost in front of the high E, still directly under the saddle. Press it into place. And three to five seconds later, pull the suction cup off and it's locked in perfectly. So now all we have to do is mount the end pin jack. I'm not gonna go into that because we have another video you should watch uh, seeing some of the important details on how that's done properly. But again, this is not a do-it-yourself tutorial. There's, I'm sure, plenty of those you can find everywhere else. This is just a little bit of a glimpse into some of the tools we use here in our shop that make the job a little bit more, uh, a little bit quicker, a little bit easier, and certainly a lot more predictable with less room for error. So that's all we have for you today. Make sure to subscribe and stay tuned. We'll be coming out with more videos as time allows. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you soon.